Hey everyone, I'm Alyssa. Today I'm going to share with you what I read for Asian Readathon, which was a readathon that took place during May and was created by Cindy at Read with Cindy. I actually found out about this readathon around the 15th, so like halfway through the month, um, but I jumped right in and was very excited for an excuse to bump some Asian authors to the top of my TBR. So let's jump straight into the books. I read four books. I will share them with you with timestamps. So you can jump straight to them if you'd like and then talk about the prompts for the reading for the readathon just for kicks and giggles and then a few like afterthoughts that I've had um, just sort of about my experience with this readathon and my uh, reading Asian authors going forward. First up, we have The Remains of the Day by Kazuo Ishiguro. I already talked about this book in a recently read video, so this might be a bit of a repetition for some of you. This is a simple and charming book. It was originally published in 1989 and takes place in the UK during the 1950s and 60s. This book is about our main character, Mr. Stevens, who is a butler who goes on a long road trip on which he muses over thoughts uh, reflecting on his life, his career as a butler, his relationships in particular, his experience working for his former boss, the former owner and master of the owner house, the manor house for which he works for, and especially working for that man during the period of World War II. This book is quite slow in content and pace, but it never feels like it's dragging its feet because it's even and measured in its tone and calculating in the same way that our main character uh, is in his personality and in his ideas of character, which is one of the main themes of the book. And in this way, the overall tone and style of the book is in perfect unison with uh, the themes and content, which was just a really beautiful and cohesive experience to read. I really enjoyed this book and I gave it five stars. Um, with the few weeks since I've read it, I think this has dropped down to about a four and a half star, but in a bittersweet way that's because I have only read more amazing books since then, so let's move on to those. The next book I read was Kitchen by Banana Yoshimoto. After the death of her grandmother, our main character, Mikaj, finds herself orf orphaned and completely alone in the world. A fellow college student, Sotaro, who happened to have known Mikaj's grandmother, spontaneously asks her or invites her to move in with him and his mother, Eriko. Eriko, who is a transgender woman, and Sotaro are disarmingly accepting and generous and their life and living with them is the backdrop for Mikaj's processing of her family's death, of her grandmother's death, that process of healing and grief, as well as developing a relationship with Eriko and especially Sotaro as Mikaj and Sotaro help each other through grief. Moonlight Shadow, the companion story in this very short book, also deals with themes of grief and loss and healing and at only 40 pages long, I don't want to tell you much of what it's about except to say that it is also about a college-aged girl whose boyfriend has recently passed away. There are overlapping narratives as she fondly remembers their time together and these romantic memories that she has while simultaneously having to reconcile herself with her new reality, to cope with that grief and move on with her life. In both of these stories, Banana Yoshimoto's writing style is simple but sophisticated and she balances these heavy subject matters with a candidness that feels raw and honest, but there's also a levity and almost lightheartedness that makes this really readable and relatable. I enjoyed both of the stories in this little book and I gave them four stars. I then read The Joy Luck Club by Amy Tan. Amy Tam is the child of Chinese immigrants and this book was originally published in 1989. I just finished this book like two days ago and I'm still recovering. The Joy Luck Club is a beautifully written series of 16 stories following 
eight characters, the four women who are the members of the Joy Luck Club and their four daughters. And the Joy Luck Club is four women who gather together to play Mahjong. These four women, the original members of the Joy Luck Club, are all immigrants from China but live in San Francisco and have American-born and raised families. The founder of the Joy Luck Club, Su Yan Wu, has recently passed away and her daughter, Jing Mei, has been asked to take her place at the Mahjong table. I'm not confident I'm pronouncing any of these names right, so please forgive me if you know better. This book is heartbreaking and beautifully chronicles generational trauma and how chasms arise in the communication gaps between generations and cultures, even in one family, but above all, how the mother-daughter bond is stronger than all of that. These mothers want to give their daughters all of the opportunities that the United States and being raised in America affords them, and to shield them from their own childhood traumas. But they also fear sometimes that they haven't passed on enough of their Chinese heritage to their daughters or that in protecting them from their Chinese trauma that they are not equipped with the kind of resilience that they now need in adulthood. And the daughters often feel that their mother's proverb-like advice is out of date and out of touch with their modern American problems. This book is heartbreaking and when I finished it, I finished it with a sob. Not an emotional moment, but a sob, an audible sob. And to the best of my knowledge, I cannot remember a time that a book has ever done that to me. Which, that might sound a bit intense, especially mentioning like generational trauma. If you're familiar with the history of, of China during World War II, which is when um, these mothers are in China before they immigrate, um, then you'll know that there are some real horrors that occurred during that time. And this book and the characters skirt around uh, some of those events, but this book never looks straight in the face of those horrors. It's more the emotional potency of those traumas that is communicated rather than the actual events. I don't think there's anything too distressing in this book, just in case that won't scared anybody. The structure of this book I really enjoyed as well. I've never played Mahjong before and I'm not familiar with the rules or like the procedure of play, but apparently this book is formatted in a way that mimics the game, um, which that kind of structural symmetry, like I am a sucker for that and that is what made me pick up this book and I think it added a lot to the story. Like I really, really liked that about the book. This book was a solid five stars for me and I, I think it's very likely I'll be making an individual review of this book. I still need to collect a lot of my thoughts, but if you are interested in that, um, comment down below and definitely subscribe so you won't miss it. The last book that I read for Asian Readathon and that I have to talk about here is The Collected Schizophrenia by Esme Weizhong Wang. This is a non-fiction book, a collection of essays written by the author about her condition and experience living with schizoaffective disorder bipolar type, which is technically different than schizophrenia but falls under that kind of umbrella. This book was published in 2019. The author is the daughter of Taiwanese immigrants born in the Midwest but lives in San Francisco. Wang is considered high functioning in her condition uh, and has an impressive resume including Yale and Stanford and doing psychology research. She also has an MFA from the University of Mis Michigan and probably most importantly has like an incredible sense of fashion. This book was fascinating and Wang explores with nuance and complexity the facets of her condition as well as not only her experience with her condition but the way that society views her condition, the way that she is viewed because of her condition and how she relates to others also with her illness and those that experience uh, living with schizophrenia. She ex shares her experiences with psychosis and hallucinations and delusions and hospitalization for her condition, forced and voluntary. The author doesn't throw a pity party here. She's not pulling for your sympathy and she's not on any crusade 
shouting for rights or awareness not that there's anything wrong with that but i simply mean the author is very self-aware and doesn't undercut the complexity of the subject matter or underestimate the intelligence of the reader by feeding us conclusions. I did never find this book too hard to understand, but there are points where it gets a bit academic. The author does use a lot of references to quotes or sources inside of her text, and I actually thought that she balanced this with her voice quite well. And this balance also meant that the author could explore her condition from so many different angles and in the context of so many different subject matters as well. I think that the looseness of her writing style might not be for everyone, but I quite enjoyed it. Sometimes she would take three seemingly irrelevant ideas or stories or narratives and then slowly weave them together and what emerges is this slow revelation of their interconnected nature to make a very complex and nuanced point. I really liked this style and I thought it worked really, really well, especially because the subject matter of mental illness cannot be rightly discussed or approached with anything but a lot of nuance and complexity, especially a mental illness that is so loosely understood as schizophrenia. I think the author covers a very broad scope of experiences and prejudices and complexities involving schizophrenia and that she does it in not just a sophisticated and intelligent manner but in a beautiful and elegant one. I gave this book a high four star, almost five star rating. Uh, I did find the last two essays I, I was very disinterested in them so it kind of ended on a bad note. But I found this book very insightful and intelligent and rather eloquent. I enjoyed the reading process of it. So if that sounds interesting to you, or especially if you enjoy nonfiction about mental illness, I think this one is worth picking up. So that's all the books that I read. As for the prompts, because this is a readathon, so I think I have to mention these. The first prompt is to read a book by an Asian author. I'm going to use Kitchen, even though all of these books are by Asian authors, but that's the one I'm going to use for that. Prompt number two is to read a book about a character or an author who is different from you. Is it different than you? That's number three. Number two is to read about someone who is similar to you or you can relate to. Um, I am picking the Joy Luck Club because I think mother-daughter relationships, uh, like I related to that. My relationship with my mom doesn't look like the relationships in this book but uh, there are some things that are just universal about family relationships. Um, so that's the one I picked for that. Number three is to pick an author or character who is different from you. I picked Esme Weizhong Wang uh, because I have not experienced schizophrenia um, or any, I don't have any personal experience with this intensity of mental illness. Uh, that's a very new experience and this book was also very educational exactly for that reason. The fourth prompt I failed, it is to read a book recommended by an Asian. I didn't end up doing that. And the fifth prompt, which is optional, is to read Little Fires Everywhere um, and then do the readathon, watchathon. I actually read this book before booktube about two years ago from now. Um, I thought it was enjoyable but a little bit unremarkable. I actually didn't really love it. I think I gave it like two or three stars. So I will probably get around to watching the TV series but I haven't done it yet. The last thing I wanted to mention is just like thoughts on this whole readathon. You can leave if you're just here for the book and books and you're bored with this, that's fine. But um, I wanted to say how like this was a fantastic experience. I mentioned that I discovered this uh, readathon was going on halfway through the month and I jumped right in. I didn't actually like have much forethought for my TBR. I had already had some Asian authors that were bubbling to the top of my TBR. So I happened to have them on hand. I had the collected schizophrenia and the remains of the day out from the library and had just recently purchased kitchen and hearing about the readathon made me finally purchase the joy luck club which i'm so happy i did because i marked it up all over the place and a second book which i didn't get around to reading half a lifelong romance by eileen chang which is um, originally published in chinese and is a translated work 
Which brings me to my next point, because I wasn't able to sort of have forethought, like preparing for this readathon, I'm, I'm happy with what I read, but I recognize it's very East Asian, uh, Chinese American, Taiwanese American, and two Japanese authors, which is great, but very East Asian, and Asia is a very big continent and involves a lot of cultures that are very distinct and individual. So because this has been just such an incredible success and I've loved all of these books that I read so much, I'm very like much still in an Asian mood. So I have a few upcoming books that I'm planning to read. Spoiler, this just turned into a TBR. So of course, I already mentioned Half a Long Lifelong Romance by Lin Chang. This is a book originally published in Chinese and is a translated work, which is another one of my complaints about my TBR is that I only had one translated work, one book that was originally published in an Asian language. So I'm excited to pick up this one. I also received from my library on ebook just today, and I'm excited to start this book like today. The Windows of Malbar Hill by Sujaya Massey. This is a mystery that takes place in 1920s India, and the author is German Indian. I also have two other books just out from the library. My Name is Red by Orhan Pamuk. This is a Nobel Prize winner for literature. It's also a mystery and translated from Turkish. This sounds really interesting to me, and I'm excited to read this one. And then I also have Pachinko, a book that I'm sure all of you have heard of, by Min Jin Lee, and uh, this author was born in Seoul, South Korea, and grew up in New York. So that's a little taste of some more Asian works that I'm really excited to uh, read during the rest of the summer, including branching out to some new countries. And if you, based on what I've shared in this video, have any Asian authors that come to mind or, or books that you think I might like, please drop them down below because I'm excited to be expanding my literary canon and reading more diversely and from more countries, more voices. Um, I'm really enjoying it. It's great. Um, I love it. Likewise, I hope that some of these books I have convinced you to pick up or introduce to you if you haven't heard of them before. I think reading diversely is so important and it's such a wonderful and enriching experience as well. So thank you for joining me here for this little wrap up and um, don't forget to say hi in the comments and thank you very much for watching. I will see you in another video. Bye!